Hello everyone, welcome to our seminar. Uh, let's first introduce ourselves. Um, the slide is not working. Let's see if this is moving. Okay, here we go. So my name is Ingrid van Streels and I work for the Port of Antwerp and um, I'm the key account manager for shippers and forwarders. I'm uh, Annemie, I also work for the Port Authority and I'm key account manager for the deep sea container lines. And I'm Steve, I work with Foodcare Plus, we're an international perishable logistics service provider in the heart of the Port of Antwerp. Okay, so what's in it for you during this webinar? Uh, during our session, we, uh, you will learn about the Port of Antwerp, which is a truly global port, but also a very known perishable port. Uh, you will get some insight in the maritime services between Latin America and the Port of Antwerp. We will show you our operational excellence in the port and last but not least, uh, we will show you how we are ready for the future by showing some digitization into the port of Antwerp. During the webinar, just shoot your questions. You have a chat box. We will uh, respond, to, respond to your questions during the webinar. If there's not enough time to respond to all questions, uh, remember that you will receive a seminary by mail afterwards where we will re recap all questions. So don't worry about non-answers given during the webinar. So just as a little warm up for you, uh, a poll, you will see a pop up also in the chat box. The question is, are you familiar with Port of Antwerp and its operations? One, yes, or a little bit, or perhaps absolutely not. So go ahead, so we have uh, some impressions about the background. Well, let's hope there are a few that uh, will opt in for number three, because they will learn a lot during this seminar, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. Although I do hope they, they already know uh, the Port of Antwerp. <laughs> Most if likely not. they do. <laughs> <laughs> well, then maybe the best option is actually number two. The one a that heard bit. of yeah. the Port of Antwerp yeah. uh, would a like to learn bit. a little bit more. Yes, yes. Things indeed. can only get better. Yes, yes, indeed. Okay, let's see if we have some results already. Well, while waiting, I suppose we go, we have a little look at this slide. Just as a small introduction, uh, why are we as a port focusing on Latin American connections? Because uh, many of you are, are connecting from those countries. Those countries are one of the biggest uh, exporters for fresh produce, of course. In total, I think we are reaching, if we combine these five countries, Colombia, Costa Rica, Ecuador, Peru and Chile, Chile. it's about 20 million tons of fresh uh, produce on a yearly basis, of course. Yeah, it's a, it's a lot. It's a yeah, lot. It's a yeah, huge it's a export lot. area, yes. We and got I've some uh, answers of the poll. Yeah, 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 you can see. Okay, so a lot of them luckily uh, answered yes. Some of them know, so okay, we still have some work to do. So, it's uh, a tie, it's a tie actually between yes and the two yeah, others, yeah. so that's good, I mean. Okay. Then, just for you uh, to understand that um, we are a truly global port. Um, we, our first port operation started already back from the 12th century, so logistics and port operations are in our blood already for a long time. We are the second European port and also the 14th port ranked worldwide. So it's really on a large scale we are operating. To go through some numbers, not uh, to, for too long, but just for you to get an impression on the dimension. Um, for example, in 2019 we shipped 238 million tons of freight. It's containers, perishables, liquid, chemical, everything included. We are uh, handling 11 million containers per year, TEU, um, growing records year by year, and we are offering jobs on a daily basis for more than almost 150,000 of people. So enough to do in our port. Thousand companies are linked direct or indirect uh, with our port of Antwerp. 
If we translate this to Antwerp being a perishable port, if we handle 11.4 million tons of perishables per year. It's a combination of containerized and conventional, but most of them are containerized and you also know that year by year the containerized uh, perishables trades are growing um, next to the conventional trades. And we had a volume growth only for perishables from last year to this year on 7% of volume growth. So that means that we are also investing for the coming years in more container capacity. Uh, by 2026, we will reach, uh, we will build up more container capacity of 7 million TEU. So still a lot of things to do in the port. If you speak of temperature controlled pallet places, we have more than 100,000 controlled pallet places in the port, in our cold stores, in the specific port area. Yeah, with 7.2%, actually, we outgrow the global uh, growth rate of uh, perishable trade. That yeah. is about 3 to 4%, which means that actually in the Port of Antwerp community, we, uh, we have a double digit uh, compared yeah. to, uh, to, to the, uh, the global market. Yeah, yeah. yeah reefer business is really booming. Absolutely. So you see our port is located in the west of Europe, but we are connected worldwide with a number of thousand services on a weekly basis with all international ports. Uh, today we will focus on our Latin American connections. If we speak of Antwerp located in west of Europe, we are actually an inland uh, river port, meaning that we are not located on the seaside, but more inland, 80 kilometers inland to uh, the Western Europe, very close to all the consumer markets from Europe. We have mentioned uh, some figures and distances, but for example, uh, the distance for a Venlo Fresh Park is 150 kilometers. Duisburg, also a very big consumer market, is located on 179 kilometers, meaning that you can reach these markets by truck from the port of Antwerp in, let's say, an average of two hours to three hours. So that's very, a very short time. We are not only doing this by truck, right, Steve? No, that is correct indeed. Uh, Venlo and Duisburg are two of those locations you can reach by inland waterways. If, of course, your product would allow that, the travel distance is also not that long for those destinations by water. So if you are uh, having the intention to try to work on your sustainability programs, you can certainly reach those two important uh, wholesale markets uh, by inland waterway. Basel, uh, by the end of this list, is, uh, is very well connected through rail. And a lot of banana right now, too, is actually delivered into the Swiss uh, heart, uh, you know, uh, from the port of Antwerp uh, by rail. And then, of course, not to forget Rangi. I think in Europe it's, it's, the, very important, it's the largest yeah. uh, fruit wholesale market, let's call this way, in Europe. Uh, now available, uh, you know, by truck, easily accessible by truck in a few hours. But obviously, as you know, there are infrastructure works planned, and hopefully within a few years we will always we will also be able to reach uh, Ranji by waterways. Another question is uh, coming in. Um, how long does it take vessels uh, to reach the port? Because we're an inland port and it takes a while. Um, do you have any idea yes. how long it takes? Yeah, well, it's a funny question because uh, actually it takes around four to six hours for a vessel, you know, to move into the inland container terminals of the port of Antwerp, which is, funnily, obviously the same as uh, the waiting birth, uh, birth waiting times in other coastal ports. So actually, vessels don't lose any time at all, uh, but you reach your markets much closer, you know, uh, yep. into the, uh, into the uh, European You win inland. in yeah. distance yes. and rate, eh? Exactly, exactly. Time yes. and rates. Exactly. Okay, so let's have a look at the maritime connections to reach Port of Antwerp. Yeah, I think it's interesting um, for you to know uh, which are the precise transit times it takes for a vessel um, to leave in uh, Latin America and to come to the Port of uh, Antwerp. Now, we've seen in the past months that a lot of carriers are choosing Antwerp as their first port of call, which gives us really the best transit times there are. And for perishables, you all know it's very important. We're not going to give you a full overview of all loops uh, going between um, Antwerp and Latin America, but we're going to focus on, on the ones with um, the first port of call. 
being Antwerp. A first service we can look at is the Ecuador to the Northwest Continent service of MSC, and it really gives amazing transit times. If you look at um, the dis distance between uh, Moin in Costa Rica and Port of Antwerp, it's only 12 days. This is really, really fast. It's a real fast service, yep. and it actually also facilitates a lot of the pineapple trade, of course, from Costa Rica into, mm -hmm. uh, into Europe, and the growing volumes of mango uh, yep. coming from Costa Rica. Uh, when we look at um, Ecuador, um, it, it depends on which port. We have uh, 19 or 21 um, transit uh, days, and then uh, Paita in Peru is uh, 18 days, so really, um, really good uh, times. Um, Next service, uh, very interesting, the CRX and the EMCS service. It's uh, operated uh, jointly uh, by Maersk and Hamburg Süd. And um, there you see um, for uh, Moin uh, 16 days. And then also very fast is uh, Manzanillo in uh, Panama. Um, it's just uh, 18 days. Then we have the SAWC1 or the CLX service. It's again uh, jointly operated uh, by Hamburg Süd and Maersk. And there um, we have um, Panama, uh, 12 or 14 days, and then uh, Chile, um, 22 days. Those are the direct uh, connections. Yeah, you which see, is, which is which is very interesting. I mean, for the Chilean market, a lot of controlled atmosphere berries uh, land into Europe, and uh, obviously grapes and other fruits coming from Chile. The twenty-two days connection into uh, the European uh, continent is very interesting through the port of Antwerp. Yeah, and then uh, the other ports you see, um, they are in a transshipment, so yes. uh, that's also a solution. Then we have the Ecubec service. Uh, again, it's jointly operated by Maersk and Amber Sud. And uh, there we have really, really good times for uh, Colombia, Santa, Port of Santa Marta, and uh, just 13 days. And then Guayaquil in Ecuador, also 18 days. So They could have called it the banana service, yeah. right? I mean, especially with the 13-day transit from Santa Marta and the importance of Colombia as an exporter, that's clearly a banana service. Yeah. Yeah. Then, last but not least, we have the Caribbean Express Service. Uh, it's uh, organized by Hapag Lloyd. Um, there, um, they um, switched flushing for Antwerp. So mm -hmm. we're very glad that we have really good transit times uh, on Cauchedo, Dominican Republic. Uh, it's uh, only 13 days. Mm -hmm. Then Colombia, 18, and uh, Costa Rica, 16 days. Well, here, clearly, uh, an opportunity for Dominican produce yeah. coming into the European continent. And we have another poll ready for you. Um, we would like to know what is your deciding factor when choosing a carrier to ship your perishables? Is it transit time? Is it price or rate? Or is it uh, the fact that uh, your carrier has to, be, has to offer a, a reliable service? Aren't we offering, actually, in the Port of Antwerp, all three of those? Yeah, correct. <laughs> Hopefully, but uh, well, depending on, uh, on, on, on a lot of factors. Of course, not all produce has the same, uh, same value. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of discussion in the market about banana prices. You can imagine that uh, banana is a very price-sensitive commodity uh, compared to maybe other more valuable commodities. There may be a difference in, uh, in the in what they choose. factor. Yep. There's you a can, high pressure on the rates. Exactly. So uh, you can imagine that controlled yeah. atmospheres, berries coming from Chile, yep. very probably have a, a, a much, much higher, you know, interest in reliable service and transit time rather than rate. Uh, yeah. Because uh, well, the well, value is five times more. Yeah. What I also wanted to add is that um, if uh, people attending uh, the webinar have questions for the carriers, um, at the end of the webinar, we will send you the details uh, of the carriers, both in Latin America and in Antwerp. So if you have specific questions, it's best that you contact them. Yeah. Okay, let's see what the result for the poll. Takes a while to count. Yeah, yeah. yeah. See if everyone is uh, fresh and awake. There, there was a question passing, uh, apparently, uh, when it comes to volumes comparing to Rotterdam and Antwerp. 
Depends, of course, on statistics available, yeah. but it's very clear that we have a growth rate that is also outgrowing uh, growing volumes in Rotterdam. And a lot will depend on first landings. Here, this is oh, okay. good. This yeah, is a good result. Yeah, yeah. surprising yeah. result. Yes, yeah. exactly. So. Okay, so mo most of the participants choose for reliable service. Yeah, and interesting rate is... Um, is no, oh, last, sorry, last. Sorry, least important. Yeah. <laughs> least yeah. important. So important for the carriers uh, who are uh, listening or following yeah. the <laughs> webinar. Maybe not. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you. That's mine. Okay. So now, how you, you know how to reach port of Antwerp? Let's have a look how our port looks like, what we are doing, and we will have a closer look to some uh, important uh, procedures like customs and phytosanitary inspection. So. What you see now on the slide is a map of our port. Of course, the blue line is the river. Remember the 80 kilometer land inwards we were speaking about. So you see the river, uh, sail, uh, the vessels take like four to six hours to sail to our port. Um, and the red zones you see now popping up are the container terminals. They are on the river side. Um, of the Skeld, that's the name of the river, and it ensures a fast handling, loading and discharge for the vessels to return back to the sea very quickly. The other ones is just a quick overview on dedicated warehousing and value-added services. So do uh, know that uh, we have in our port the container terminals, but very close to that we have the cold stores, uh, the warehouses, for, for the storage and the cross-docking, more extra services, etc. A last point which is important for you to know is that we have several border inspection posts in our port, which actually we have two for the customs and we have several more also located at the cold stores for the phytosanitary inspection. So you have all the necessary infrastructure in the, in the heart of the port to fulfill all the operations. I think we have a question. What about port cost operations in comparison with Rotterdam? Well, I can answer that very quickly. Yeah. The port of Antwerp is, uh, is, uh, is operating at a lower cost than the port of Rotterdam. So, while you are very far away connected to the webinar, let's just have a look um, via pictures. This is a picture of our biggest container terminal. It's also the biggest container terminal in Europe. It was it's quite new, it was finished in 2016 and it has a K-length of 5.3 kilometers. So you see those vessels from the biggest uh, shipping lines uh, berthed there for operations. We operate 24 hours per day for the discharging and the loading, etc. of the containers. Another interesting picture for you is uh, to see uh, Belgium New Fruit Wharf, better known as BNFW. It's a dedicated perishables terminal where uh, most of those LATAM services you just saw are berthing for operations. Um, you see there the container vessel, uh, we have containerized operations over there, but also conventional ships are discharging there. And the building you see over there is an automated warehouse where they can take in directly the pallets with the fresh produce. So all very closely together. This one is also a closer look to the vessels operations on the same terminal. You see all those reefers, uh, the vessel is discharging very quickly. Um, this is another picture of the reefer stack. Remember when we showed you the figures, we have around 8,000 reefer plugs in our port. So this is an example of the reefer stacks where they have a constant monitoring of those reefers to ensure uh, the connection and the correct mm -hmm. temperature, etc. It is a substantial number actually. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So and I think it's even more important to look at the figures, how much of we use that because we are known for fast operations. We'd yeah. rather have fruit uh, you know, landed with customers than have it in plugged in the port. So yeah. uh, it's an important way to look at it. Uh, this is um, the last picture, is an example of our cold stores where you can uh, see uh, the pallets of the fresh produce. 
Uh, do know that we have cold stores in our, in our port area, but we also have a lot of service providers in our port and around of our port providing all the necessary services to have a streamlined uh, supply chain uh, for the perishables. Maybe it's not very clear on the map that we've shown before, but these cold stores are literally located only a few hundred exactly. meters from the container yeah. terminals. So you can, you know, bring your container over the fence. Uh, yeah. So uh, you can imagine yeah. literally. Yeah, you so don't have to waste uh, any precious exactly, time. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. exactly, yeah. Yeah, here we want to zoom in. Um, on some of the customs procedures, um, what we show you here is a map of the European Union. And you see the dark red is the European Customs Union. And it's, um, it's interesting to know that um, on the territory of the, of the Customs Union, we have uh, the same rules, the same selection criteria, the same import duties. And when you decide to have your goods customs cleared in Antwerp, then they can travel freely around the other member states, no more controls, no more inspections. Now, for customs clearance, there are two options. One is you can choose to have your goods, uh, as earlier um, uh, as earlier explained, you can have them custom cleared in Antwerp, so you pay then your import dues there. Uh, or you can um, choose for deferral and, and you can have then your customs clearance in another member state or, or at another destination, but then you need a, a transit document. And it means then that your goods uh, will travel under a customs uh, control. Um, your uh, import duties will be um, suspended then until they arrive at your chosen destination. Of course, there is no customs clearance without a phytosanitary inspection. And also there, there are two options. Or you choose to have your inspection in the port, be it at a border inspection post, or be it at another uh, licensed uh, inspection post in the port. As, as, as you will see, most of our cold stores, they have um, inspection posts. But if, if you want to uh, defer uh, your inspection, then that's also possible, but you will need then um, an authorization of the federal agency for the safety of the food chain. Uh, if you choose um, for your goods um, to be uh, inspected uh, in the port of Antwerp, uh, as I told you before, you have then the choice between um, the border inspection posts or other uh, licensed inspection posts. But uh, the advantage when you choose for the border inspection posts is that there you have uh, not only the federal agency for the safety of the food chain, but you also have there um, the scanning of the customs. So uh, it's, it's like a, a one-stop shop. You can have your uh, container scanned and then you can have the phytosan uh, phytosanitary inspection right away, uh, you don't have to drive somewhere else. So it's, um, it's very convenient. It is very convenient because if, you, if your containers are being selected for scanning, uh, obviously uh, we as logistic service providers do, uh, do also organize the phytosanitary inspection at the same time, at the same spot. So you win money with that and you win time with that. Yeah. And then it can happen actually, because we just saw a question passing, yeah. it can happen actually simultaneously. Uh, yeah. So you go through that process in one easy, easy way. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's also interesting to mention that uh, in Port of Antwerp, you do not need to make an appointment to have your goods uh, inspected uh, at the border inspection post. You just drive there and um, you will be uh, helped. Very good remark, and indeed, uh, we of course also have an overview on how much waiting time we have at the border inspection post. So even if we see at that given point of time that it would be better to use another licensed inspection facility, we can still do that very much yeah. last minute. Yeah. Last uh, remark regarding uh, customs is um, VAT. It's a question we often get. Do, do you, as, as a shipper, do you need, uh, or an importer, do you need to pre-finance VAT when your goods pass via the port of Antwerp? Well, you don't have to do so. Um, so you can defer uh, the VAT 
to the the person who is um, who is receiving the goods and and who will consume them. Uh, what you need to do is you need to have uh, somebody uh, who can fiscally represent you and uh, our logistic service providers in the port of Antwerp are happily to help you with this. We use this system a lot, of course, for a lot of the international customers we have to uh, facilitate them a sales platform, uh, helping them indeed to uh, increase their cash flow. Uh, yep. You know, Depending on what kind of product, it can have a significant impact on the working capital operations of a lot of customers. And indeed, as it says on this slide, you can combine it with different other potential solutions like, uh, like uh, some of the uh, inspection uh, quality inspection uh, 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 that we can do in the port before actual delivering uh, to the customers directly, but we'll 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 get to that yeah, later. We have a very specific question I saw on uh, what's the impact of Brexit on customs union and agreements. Very well, good question. Well, yeah. there's still a lot to be discussed, of course. It is true that the Port of Antwerp uh, has certainly been a gateway for a lot of fresh produce, uh, even going or uh, being forwarded to uh, to the United Kingdom. And obviously, depending on uh, the solutions that are going to be presented by both uh, both uh, continents now, will yeah. be uh, will be uh, having an impact on how the operation will uh, happen in the future. Yeah. But until today, and still, of course, today until the end of this year, yeah. uh, it is possible to uh, to clear as well for Phyto as for customs products because they are still uh, a part of the internal market yeah. of Europe, and we can put that through. Um, what is going to happen with people selling fruit in the UK after uh, the 1st of January next year? Well, we don't know. We do know that uh, the operations in the past have not been very fast in those UK ports. And a lot of people chose the port of Antwerp in the past because the FITO release process and the customs release process was faster in Antwerp. So it was faster to, to have your product arrive in Antwerp you know, have the full release here and then try to yeah. northbound or use other other services. But to that will be finished then. Yeah. It might be finished, yeah. yes. It's yeah. probably going to be finished. The yeah. impact will be bigger on the UK market than on the mainland yes, for Europe, yes, of course. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe um, I can... Uh, again uh, revisit uh, the idea that I just brought forward. I think it's an, uh, a very important uh, advantage for people that choose the Port of Antwerp as a gateway for uh, delivering fresh produce into Europe. Um, we do have and we do offer a lot of uh, different solutions in order to have, mm -hmm. let's say, a more seller's quality inspection before the product is delivered finally to the, uh, to the importers. Um, especially when we look at uh, all the available systems right now and the platforms, it gives a lot more comfort to shippers of fresh produce in Latin America to see you know, how their further flow of the supply chain of fresh produce actually is happening. Um, and that is usually facilitated by the logistic service provider who can use these licensed uh, inspection facilities or even third-party uh, locations uh, to, to make sure that they have more comfort in the, in the quality uh, of their fruit. Before we move into digitization, I think uh, maybe it's good to have uh, the last poll uh, for, yeah. this, uh, for this uh, webinar. Um, do you think digitization can optimize your supply chain for perishables? Uh, option number one, yes, definitely. Uh, option number two, I still haven't tried it. Or three, no, we don't think it, uh, it could optimize uh, you know, the supply chain for perishables. So let's wait let's and wait. see. Let's, yeah. wait. let's wait and see, yes, exactly. Yeah, we have a question. Meanwhile, how do the reverse volumes uh, compare to Rotterdam? Um, well, Rotterdam has uh, has quite a bit more volumes than us. I think it's it's relating uh, the the previous question we had. Well, it depends you, on the flows. Yeah, I mean, if you look at flows. if you look from an export. Antwerp has always uh, been a much better balanced uh, port when it comes to import and export. That's why also uh, why a lot of these carriers have been choosing yeah. uh, us as a first port of call, because Antwerp is truly an export port. And a lot of fresh produce and uh, perishable cargo from Europe is actually being exported through the port of Antwerp. So, uh, so that even helps uh, you yeah. know, boosting our volumes over there. When it comes to import, 
I do believe that Rotterdam uh, might have uh, still a little bit of an advantage on that. But a lot of those reefer containers are being moved empty into the port of Antwerp. So in a lot of carriers start seeing that, which means yep. that, uh, that they will also change the rotations of their vessel and choose Antwerp more as a first port of call. That's why we are explaining now the new Latin services, yeah. because we have the first port of calls now coming to Antwerp. Wow, okay. we do have now an yeah. answer. <laughs> it's a nice introduction. Exactly. Yeah, it's a very nice introduction. So uh, it's, uh, it's uh, very clear that uh, everybody believes that is taking part of this webinar that, uh, that uh, digitization will definitely help to optimize uh, supply chain for perishables. And um, we would like to share with you uh, what is actually uh, in the pipeline for people that use the Port of Antwerp. You know, Port of Antwerp is a very vibrant city and it also has a very vibrant tech community. Uh, the Port of Antwerp themselves organize hackathons yep. and there are several places uh, in, in and around our city where uh, young and older people you know, work <laughs> on solutions. <laughs> I have to be careful what I say here, on solutions on, uh, on optimizing supply chain. But it actually all starts with uh, when the fruit is being loaded in the container in Latin America. There is right now a lot of tools available to have already information exchanged with your destination market through blockchain systems and platforms. We'll have some uh, examples of that later. So container data, product data, temperature data, even already phytosanitary documents, whether or not digital, and even pre-trip inspection surveys could be uploaded in the available platforms and systems today, which allows us in the Port of Antwerp to have an even more expedient process for releasing the cargo. In number two, in this slide, you can see that we actually uh, have solutions in the port where we can expedite this uh, even faster by already uh, planning well in ahead before the vessel actually arrives. And then in number three, we believe maximum transparency towards buyers will help you to have an even better sales form platform in order to, to get your fresh produce into uh, to the European continent. So it's all about blockchain. There's a lot that is being said about that. Uh, for us, I think it is very important to know as much as we can before the cargo arrives in the port and everything helps. Uh, light detection, for example, on this slide is a very important one when it comes to cargo security, uh, but also temperature data and all phytosanitary documentation can help to facilitate the release process in phyto yeah. uh, much faster because we can share that data with the authorities and with other stakeholders. And not only that, real-time data, of course, also enriches uh, your fruit, your product, uh, for all the other stakeholders in the supply chain. A very interesting one, and not a lot of people know about this, uh, this, this actually, is that um, the majority of the terminal operators in the port of Antwerp have opened up their terminal black box. When you, as a logistics service provider, you know, share information with them about shipments that are coming in. If we report to them what the next mode of transport is, so truck, barge, or rail, and we help them to understand where the product actually is coming to, they share with us information that helps us to plan even better. And that is why when cargo is being actually discharged from a vessel, our truck is already ready there, or a barge, to pick up the container. And that is because if we share this information with them, before even the vessel calls the container terminal, they already tell us when that the container will be discharged by the gantry crane yep. on the container terminal. And it's also good for the terminal operators because they can organize themselves much more efficiently. Absolutely. Yep. Why would you move a container, a reefer container, into the container reefer stack if that is going to be picked up in two hours? Yep. So they also win, of course, with that. Yep. And uh, these discharge forecasts, uh, combined with uh, green light checks, really gives us as logistics service providers a lot of tools to, uh, to plan much better and more efficiently than using the classical ways to, uh, yeah. to go It's real-time real -time data. You don't have to log into a platform no, no. or you just receive it uh, real-time real -time data. Real -time. I see we get another question. Yeah. Uh, how secure are my data and how long do you keep my data? Well, let's start with the last one. That depends, of course, on how you agreed with your data provider or your logistics service provider or the platform that are being used, how long that data is being stored. Yeah. Obviously, uh, you know, blockchain uh, had its foundation on cryptocurrency. Uh, we can all assume that the information that's being exchanged is being done in a very, very secure way. And in fact, with blockchain, you can decide as the owner of the data who you want to share that data with. So it's very, very, very secure. In this slide here, we have a very beautiful picture about how a system like that could work. This is one of the communities 
uh, excuse me, one of the platforms that we use uh, with Food Care Plus as an example. Uh, it allows you to have a lot of information stored uh, about a certain transaction uh, in, uh, in combination with temperature data and uh, documents that we actually used before we, uh, before we actually plan or start planning on importing the produce. So it helps us really to facilitate maximum transparency and have a very fast release process. And I wanted to share, because this is one of the last slides, I think before you, uh, yeah. we're going to wrap it up. I also wanted to share again uh, some of the key takeaways from a logistics service provider point of view. Consider really to extend that transparency uh, to comfort. Give yourself more comfort by, uh, by looking at potential ways to have uh, other quality inspections prior concerning delivery. Uh, there's a lot of discussion about that in the market. The cost is pretty low compared to the value that they get in order to have that uh, facilitated. Another thing I believe is a very important one is there are other ways also to, uh, to organize direct deliveries. You could use a more port-centric cold store approach by, uh, by using with the fiscal representation and all the available tools that we have in the port to sell your product through a port operation, port-oriented operation rather than mm -hmm. any land operation in, uh, in Europe. Okay, we have a nice question. What suggestion to start up export perishables from Peru to port of Antwerp? Um, well, it brings us to the end of our, our, um, our presentation, our webinar, is the fact that, um, I'll come back to the question directly, is during this webinar we wanted to bring a story. One is the fact that we have hyper-fast perishables logistics in combination with our new shortest transit times, including the first port of calls, our very beneficial inland location, and, of course, the operational excellence going hand in hand with the digitization. That's actually our message from this webinar. Um, not to forget is that we will send you a full package of information via email within two weeks, meaning that it will be a seminar, summary of the webinar with Q&A being fully answered. You will receive a webinar recording so you can still have a look at it afterwards. And very important is that you get all the contact details necessary for a potential startup using the port of Antwerp. From one hand, you will receive the contact details from all the, all the shipping lines. And from the other hand, you will receive all the contact details from the perishables service providers. You can have a look uh, at it. You can send mails to those, those service providers. Would you still need some personal advice? We are also there to help you with all the information necessary. So that was our message, but also for you to get to know us and to know that we are very reachable uh, to get some information. So that was it. Um, are again, uh, again uh, maybe we should look at the question uh, for the uh, Peru to the export perishable. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Meaning that you can contact the logistic service providers, you can contact the shipping lines, you can also come over here for a visit. We will help you to get to bring you in contact with some uh, companies. Do you have some more suggestions, uh, Steve? Well, I think um, if you if you would consider uh, to start exporting perishables to Europe, um, the more traditional way to do that is to start looking for importer partners uh, yeah. that already use the port. But it's certainly an interesting exercise to try to build your own sales platform using all those tools that are made available in the market. It gives you much more flexibility and for sure your products are located in an area that is the closest to, uh, to the wholesale markets. Um, doing that through the cold store operators in the port uh, hand in hand with the logistic service provider will definitely give you tools to, uh, to make sure that it's a success story. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I would say let's stay in touch and uh, thank you for assisting the webinar. See you later. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.